folks, and welcome to the Saturday Morning Santa Flange. I'm Matt. I'm Benjamin. I'm so glad you're back. Oh, yes, I am too. Do you know what I see? Hmm. A sea of madness. Do you? <laughs> I spy with my little eye. Guess what? Tell right me. before you, no, the day you text me, yeah, I'm back, let's do this. Let's yes. do some. Um, that day I was in class and someone's nephew, cousin, uncle, brother, I don't know. Someone's relation. That's be a nephew or whatever. Is the cameraman. Was Which one of the cameraman, cameraman uh, white beard, white thin, white hair, white beard. Works for uh the local T V station here. Uh, but he also did some camera work there. Oh, okay. You know, I had to film a lot of nights. Yeah. I saw filmed, a lot of set photos. Only nights. I saw a lot of set photos. Yeah. And everything. Um so I cannot remember their name. But uh she was showing me photos. I went, I know what that she I know yeah, who that I, is. She said the movie's called uh I went, Sea of Magic. Ma- no. Yes. Hey. And she went, How did you know? I said, I know. Uh, I know things. Because I'm I'm hip on what the up and coming movies there. But uh yeah. yeah. That's so uh, great. she was talking about it and showing all the set photos and stuff. So we did take a lot of great photos. So this is this is a pseudo sequel. This is the direct sequel. Direct sequel to the Bog Man, to the Bog which Man. you can see on uh, Chiller. Uh, it's is, on YouTube now. It's on YouTube. Full film is on YouTube, but it is also on Roku and yep. and Gago, which is Green Apple Go. Yeah, so Green Apple Entertainment is our producer and distributor. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got a seven year d- unlimited picture deal with them. And uh, they're going to produce and distribute all of our films for the for the Bogman anthology universe that we have. All, Excellent. All, all screen written, and I'm one of the only characters that survives all of these these horrible things. And That's so fantastic. I get to play a little bit of a uh, a, a, a Mulder type in, of character. In a way, an Alan X-Files. Quartermain, if you may, yeah, if you, Indiana if you Jones, might, yes. if you may, if you may, a, yeah. a Mulder. As yeah. long as I've got an arc going, then I can keep him yeah. keep him growing and building. And he keeps going. So went through the bog, man. Saw some traumatic stuff. Saw some friends get eaten and torn apart by the Bigfoot when he was in South Arkansas. And then this is a direct carryover. So the the plot of this one is. We uh, two of the surviving characters from the end of Bogman are uh, heading on to a yacht to ask this rich billionaire for money to fund their new show because the body of the Bogman. So, spoiler alert for Bogman: Bogman dies at the end. Right. But I still, ha- I'm the scientist of the show, right? Yeah, but you kept. The I have the body, oh. and so I have gone to great lengths to maintain his secrecy. But mm-hmm. this billionaire has found out about it, and so he's intrigued, and that's the reason he agreed to meet with us. Mm. And so he gives us our funding. We give a handshake agreement and all this other kind of stuff. We go out onto the yacht to party and celebrate and have a good time and then all kinds of craziness happens and then there's a storm that just freaks out of nowhere and bam and then all of a sudden i won't give anything away but we're on a world war ii vessel just drifting out in the ocean and then we're like what is this what's going on what's happening so we climb aboard because we've got no supplies and no nothing and we have to survive turns out that these scientists on the boat have been disturbing something at the bottom of the ocean Mm -hmm. and things are very upset about it and then bad things start to happen and these evil mermaids start to pop up and so, really, that's the only two words that I have to pitch this to Ooh, people. Evil mermaids. Yes. Basically, I just say, what's the movie about? And, or I say, what's the movie about? And it's about evil mermaids. From the, oh, I'm in. I'm totally oh. interested. <laughs> so, everything you told me about the Australian beaches was correct. Exactly. Because that's where they come from. So that's how, how they I, get you. They got the evil mermaids in those Australian beaches. Evil mermaids. And, oh, I'll tell you gosh. Right. The siren song is real, bro. <laughs> Telling you, and it is. It's in this movie too. And yeah. Listen. So we've got a budget okay. now, and uh, the last one we just were a bunch of guys running around in the woods, and we made a pretty good film out of it. But it was good enough to get us a distribution deal and a, and yes. a, and a production company, right? That's, and and to get your foot track, in the door, and to get on Roku, like it's yeah. it's not Netflix, but it's still it's an actual streaming app that people have heard yes. of, you know. So. Um, this time we got some uh, backing and some and some producers and some and some uh, angel investors, if you will, and then we got right. the, the foot in the door that, as well as that, the names. That's and the what contacts happens and, when the foot gets in the door exactly. and contracts and exactly. connections start being and made. So we made the connections and we've we've continued to make one connection after another and just really people that are big names like just last week I was talking about meeting Rachel Pizzolatto at the New Orleans Comic Con you know she's an up and coming mm-hmm. influencer and everything else and she's she could potentially be in one of the next ones and so because yeah. she lives in New Orleans or she's from there yeah, at least and, right there and uh, who, we're going to try to film all these in Louisiana you know because Good, of the, yeah. the film hometown yeah hometown we want to keep the money here and everything else and so it's Good. great and we're very proud of that and so this one, we pick up the story and things get crazy real fast. And they've already edited the the whole half. First half of it is done, and I'm so shocked. Like none of the details are there yet. We've got a lot of pickup shots to do. We've still got some of the main big action scenes to film. But what we did 
was we booked almost an entire week on the USS Kidd down in Baton Rouge, mm-hmm. and which is a, a World War II destroyer from 1945. And it's got – it's the most World War II – authentic meaning it's got all of its original equipment as much as any other destroyer museum in the entire world and at least in the united states because these u.s destroyers and so it's the most uh, authentic to the way it was in 1945 for, of any other place and that's where we filmed the vast majority of this entire film and i'm six foot six so it was no picnic and we were all hunched over and i'm really tall but i only hit my head once <laughs> And I'm very proud of that. And I've got one little sore spot up there. So only one Scotty star- via Star Trek Five. Yes, pieces. exactly. Only one. I know this ship like the back, back of, of my, of my hand. hand. Dong. Yeah. yeah. And I wanted. To, I tried to add that scene in. <laughs> I, I, I had. I had one line. There's one line where we're in the captain's cabin, and I and we have flashlights distributed, and, and my line was, "Well, now that we all have lights, let's see what we can find." And I wanted to turn around and just immediately hit my head and bong, hit my head on something, but the camera right. wasn't on me at that time, and I it was too late to change it, and it was like four in the morning, and so I didn't. Want to argue about it <laughs> of course but it was beautiful because the kid let us stay there we got to sleep there we got to eat there uh we we lived basically in the museum and they opened every day i think at nine or nine thirty, and they closed at 3 30 or something i was maybe eight to 3 30 but at about 3 30 we would all get up because we'd been sleeping or filming the night before and then four o'clock we'd make it over to the ship and then we would film from about four o'clock to four o'clock, maybe twelve, and then you know a couple of days we went to seven or eight o'clock in the morning because the sun was coming up. Yeah. And but we would film these sixteen-hour days and just just make it back to the museum in time to, uh, you know, blow up the air mattress again and, and to just crash right there in the little uh, the guest room, uh, the mm-hmm. conference room that they have at the end of the hall. And then uh, while we had been filming, as soon as we were done filming, they would get the camera, uh, the SD cards from the film that they had gotten. They'd got a little sound and everything. Yeah. They'd take it to the editor who was in the, the war room, we called it. And he was splicing together the footage that we had shot that day. So as we get over there, just finished filming for 16 hours straight. We're dead tired, but we're ready to go to bed. But we're still very hyped and excited yeah, because yeah, of what yeah, everything we just did. Get over everything. But he would cut together some of the scenes from that day. So we would watch the dailies, as they say, right? Yeah. And But we were all so pumped because it looked so good. And right. so to be on Netflix, to be on Hulu, to hit the big boys, you have to have a certain criteria of equipment, right? Right. You've got to have this $20,000 camera <clears throat> or Netflix. Netflix says to even be considered for Netflix, you've got to have one of these cameras that's on this list. If you want to have even be considered for Netflix, you've got to have some of the sound equipment that's on this, this list, list. You know, yeah. and so we have all that stuff now. So technically, we Good. and we have people well, who know people who and, work for and, Netflix. And what they're doing is they he took the money and they're also investing back into the business. Which oh, absolutely, is what you do. exactly. You, be, you invest yeah. back in the business. And Every dollar make it we better. made from Bogman is going into this, yeah. and and then it yeah. will go for the next one as well. And then it just pa- and that's and it, why they keep looking it, nicer. Steam rolls like di- like Steve Munn's dinner snowballs. Yeah, you just keep Steve putting Bunn's in more money, right. and everyone just looks better. And that's than the exactly next. what we did. So we would watch the dailies and get so excited because it looked so good on these cameras, and they put the LUTs on it, and it would just look so beautiful. And then we had a lot of inside jokes that would happen because there's so many good moments. This cast and this crew bonded all, all of us bonded immediately not That's just awesome. the actors but the 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 camera crew the sound crew the the everybody who was there working every bit of it they were all of us were strangers at the beginning of the week and best friends we're still we still i've been home over a week and a half maybe two weeks almost we have a group chat that hasn't stopped like every day we have been sending each other jokes and That's talking awesome. about the film and uh, explaining like the director is cutting it together and he's telling us where we, where we are like the excitement still is going and it, we've great. been home over a week and it, it, it's, it's it was a priceless unique experience that i have never replicated even in some of the all the best theater i've done you know, it's on par with those shows when you're on stage and the whole cast gels. It's on par with that experience. It's just it had a different flavor to it because it was a film, because we were on an actual World War II battleship, because we were filming 16-hour days and we were all exhausted and sleeping in the same room and just getting up and doing it all over again, because we were filming from 3.30 p.m. We were having breakfast, you know, and it wasn't weird. It, we were eating bacon and eggs at 3.30 in the, in the afternoon, and it was like, okay, it's time for breakfast. And then you check your watch. And you're like, oh, yeah, it's like 4 o'clock. But then you just film all day. You have dinner or lunch around 1 a.m. And then you had uh, you know, your dinner time meal at 6 yeah. a.m. And then you know, just go to sleep and do it all over yeah. again. So it's kind of like the best theater performance you've ever done. But it all happens in the middle of the night. Now, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then also like, time has no meaning anyway when you're in the bottom of this ship. 
And so most of the film is shot. There's no windows. We weren't around any portholes or anything like that. Like it was dark and, and very eerie in there because it was lit in a way that these creatures from the bottom of the ocean are transforming the ship quite literally as well. So like the walls are breathing in one scene, you know, and there's yeah. goo dripping out of them and stuff like that. And then I'm, I have the line, the scientist line, like, don't touch this. You know, it could be poisonous I, or whatever. I, 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 I saw a spoiler in one of the pictures. Did you? Uh, the, the, that I uh, sent you? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, that that this lady showed me. Okay, and yes, what, what's it the was spoiler. A, I, well, spoiler I, alert. I, I see a dead body. Oh, okay. You know and what it looks like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After after the fact. Well, so, so you don't. Oh, okay. I know what you're talking. You about. You know what I'm talking yeah, about yeah, now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. That I was, was like, I don't think you should show me this one. I, I think I, I know who died. I well, think, if I figure out who it is, I think but. his name was Herman. Uh, okay, that's what we named him anyway. It okay, was Herman. There you so go. it was yeah. it was a good prop. Yeah, we had a really good shot. Uh, it was a really tight hallway. Most of it was shot in very tight hallways, and uh, well, I mean, that's what this. That's, that's all it was. That's right. what it was. Yeah, but it was so amazing to. We filmed a lot of it in the mess hall because it was one of the biggest rooms, right? And so a lot of it got shot in the mess hall. But right out of the mess hall are all these bunks, and you've got them four deep. You know, you have to roll into it. There's no climbing into bed. Like you have to roll into your bed, and you are six inches from the person above you and six inches from the person below you there's no room f to maneuver at all and uh, but we were in there for so long and we were so tired and there was so much set up between shots it's like we would sleep on this ship in, in these world war ii barracks where these people lived and worked and died and all kinds of craziness happened and it was really great because the crew that actually worked on the kid uh, the people who worked for the museum, mm -hmm. we got to know all of them on a first name basis. I have several of their phone numbers. We signed all, awesome. we all signed autographs and autograph posters for them at the end because yeah. by the end of the week, they were so excited uh, that they were bringing in like junior people who worked for the museum because we had to be supervised everywhere we went. Right, right. Because uh, it was it's it's a literally a living legend kind of thing. There's artifacts everywhere. We can't break anything. In the first day, they were pretty strict with it us. It makes sense. They were like, this is how it works. This is how we're going to go. you got to be led into this place in this area. And you know, this is the rules. And, it, of course, it makes sense. They have to preserve it. That's their main job. That's their job. But by the end of it, they were just having fun, as much fun as we were. And so much so that they would bring it in the people who were who just started, you know, a few months ago. And they're like, oh, I've never seen a movie. They filmed several movies there over the years and years. You know, they did Greyhound. Right. Tom Hanks did Greyhound there in 2020. And uh, so they've seen they've had really big big productions come in. So Apple Plus, that's on Apple TV, I believe. And uh, uh, so Tim is uh, bringing in people just because I want to watch. How does this work? And so they're laughing and having a good time. They're cracking jokes with us. Uh, they they would find a, a nook somewhere in a, a hidden room, and they would always know which way the camera was pointing, and then they would know to get up and oh, I gotta move. I gotta move because I can get seen. But otherwise, yeah. they would find a hidden nook that we didn't even know where they were because they were they knew the ship so well. And then they would just sit there and watch and watch us film and everything. And I asked Tim, I said, so what's the biggest difference between like a production, a big production like Greyhound versus us? And he's like, yeah, it's kind of pretty much the same. Everybody was in a good mood and had a good time like this. But the only biggest difference is that uh, the script, because they know their lines, they get it this certain way, they get it this certain way, they go boom, boom, boom. All right, moving on, next scene. And so they're very much more methodical because they've just done it more. Makes they know sense. what they need. They Makes know what, how much time it's going to take, and they just cruise through it. Also, Mitch plays very fast and loose with his scripts. So if it sounds more real this way, he encourages you to say yeah. it that way. And you notice that from writing scripts yeah. that I've done. Yeah. Uh, we'll write it, and I'm not opposed. I'm not opposed. Yeah. If it sounds, if it sounds like better, the flow, that, if it, if it mix, then let mixes it. With, with the character, yeah. and let's it, then let's You let's have a very similar it. style with your scripts, absolutely. Yeah. And I would say that a good that's chunk, just how it works. A good chunk of Bogman, the, the, the cuts that they used were improvised lines that, that we did, and, and mine and two. And this one as well. Like, I've already seen a lot of the cuts that they've chosen, and yeah. almost every scene of mine that we've done was an improvised line just in the moment that, that I did, just in the flavor of the character and in the same vibe of what I needed to say. But it was not on the page as written. It was just kind of just came out that way because it was just in the moment. Right. And it was... It was terrific in, in a camaraderie kind of way. I, honestly, one of my favorite moments to, to highlight what I'm talking about is we had a scene in the middle of the movie where the scientist that I'm playing, Dr. Benjamin Martin, he's trying to find out where we are because we get we get enough of a signal on the phone. And uh, long story short, we get, we get, we get, to, make, or we get to make one phone call. And so we have barely figured out the coordinates of where we are, right? And, I'm, and so this scene we're about to shoot is me getting the one phone call out and, and calling somebody to give them our coordinates. And I was like, well, how did I get the coordinates? I'm just here in this dingy basement kind of thing, and there's no light. I don't even – and the set, the, the set crew has uh, put 
literal trash on the table, like just to make it lived in kind of thing. Yeah. I'm like, well, this is just looks stupid. It's just going to be literal trash on the table and me with a notebook and a pen. Like, how did I get these coordinates? And so I need a map. Can I just have some kind of a map just in the distance or something? So I go upstairs. I tell Tim, who was the main guy working for the museum. And I said, is there a map, like an artifact, that I can just have in the shot? I won't yeah. touch it. I won't go anywhere near it. But can we just have it so that it looks like I was looking at it? You know, like a World War II map. Yeah. And he says, uh, how soon do you need it? And I said, eh, like five, ten minutes maybe. And he says, I got you. I can't get you an authentic one, but I got a better idea. And so he gets on his walkie-talkie, radios to the people in the museum still, gets them, gets a, sends a runner halfway to meet them across the thing, and so one person comes running from the museum this way. One person runs from the ship this way. They and meet they in the middle run back. with a prop map from the museum gift shop. Bring it back to me. Smart. And then unfold it to a certain page. And then the sound guy takes it. He gets it. He's like, here's your map. Da, da, da. So thank you. Thank you. Real quick. We're getting set up. Sound guy starts rolling it up and, and tearing it recording apart. Recording it. it. Yeah. No, he's, he's, uh, he's recording oh, it. But he's, he's me- also, messing it up. He's literally messing it up because he's, yeah, he's trying to put wrinkles in it and crinkle yeah. it and stuff like that. So he's crinkling this thing for the last two or three minutes. They get it to me, and then the director comes over and is like, oh, we can't have it in the shot. And I'm like, well, why not? And he said, because of continuity. We filmed the first part of this yesterday, and you you didn't have it on the table yesterday. I was like, oh, all right, I'll figure it out. So I just rolled it up, and I threw it next to the table next to me. And then he's like, all right, and action. And so we start doing the scene, da-da-da-da-da. And I get on the phone. And then it just hits me in the moment, like this is when I would have the map. So I reach down, pull it up, whoosh, just whip it out across the table with one arm. And it's like, okay, here's our coordinates. It's 25.67, da 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 da. And I it, like all panic, and it was just great. And then I was like, did you get that, Richard? And I'm calling out his name, and then the phone goes dead, of course. But then I'm just, and then we have the final moments, and da da da, and we, and we finish the scene. And then I was like, oh, that was perfect. It was exactly right. It's like, okay, let's do one more because we got to get it from this angle. So I put the map back down. Yeah. And then I just, right at the exact, no no rehearsal, no nothing, right at the exact mm-hmm. moment again, I just knew and felt when to pick it up. Just, poof, it rolled out perfectly again. And I was like, here's our coordinates. Da, 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 da. And it felt very much like the Goonies kind of moment, like a lay yeah. up the map and just, uh, here, let's put the doubloon on the table and we're going to yeah. figure this out. And, uh, like the the point that I liked that scene a because it was slightly improvised, b because it felt right in the moment and as an actor, uh, you probably know what I'm talking about. Like your best performance, when you get off stage, you really don't remember what happened. Yeah, because you were so in it that you can't even remember what you did yeah. to make it so good. Wasn't that you were just reciting the lines? Exactly. You were speaking so them. So you don't remember it yeah. because it was just such a flow and it just yeah. it's an energetic uh, uh, unification of the audience and the actors and this whole show. And that's what makes theater and, and movies and film so great. Mm-hmm. So it was a combination of that and me not having memory of exactly how it went down. Uh, and then, uh, but the, the, even the film crew the film crew and the museum crew, everybody worked to make that scene happen. And then the director saw it and he was like, that was perfect. That was perfect. And I was like, do you want to do a third one? And I was like, no, I loved it. It was so good. I don't want to mess it up. Let's move thing. on. So we only shot it two times and that was it. Nice. And it was so, it felt so good. And, but everybody contributed to it. Like every single person down there right. all made that movie happen. And awesome. that times a hundred is what that entire week was. So we That's spent awesome. five days on the kid with that kind of vibe constantly and if we weren't helping each other out we were uh laughing about it and making the best jokes we have so many inside jokes that i cannot even tell you about i can't even begin to tell you about and some of them have to do with beaches in australia yeah uh, it's just unbelievable and and the, the jokes that came out but also the acting was so quality because the this is a cheesy horror film right it's a it's an indie horror film so it's gonna be hokey cheesy actiony fun it's silly vibes to it But it's also got some very, very good moments and some very, very good actors who are really passionate about what they do. Of course. Uh, There was one girl there who went to the Lee Strasberg School of Acting when she was 17, which is like one of the best schools in the freaking world. Yeah. And uh, we got to talk about acting and, and she would just deliver a line to me. In a different way, we'd do three takes of one line that she would have, and she would deliver it at me in an entirely different way. Like, the first time, she'd do it, like, very sexy, and I'm like, oh, okay. Well, and then the next time, she'd be furious and, and, and angry as if it was my fault that this happened. And I got to react, because she knew that my facial expression would react to whatever she was doing, and we were playing off of each other. And and what, and this was at the end of filming, so she, we'd already gotten to know each other a little bit, and she knew that she could throw these different emotions at me, delivering the same line, and that my face would be, <laughs> okay, what's happening? And, you know, or it would be, oh, well, all right then, you know, and yeah. stuff like that. So that was so 
fun to work with people who really knew their craft, you know? Yeah. And we have a guy who's a professional wrestler. He's done like 300 re- wrestling matches. So oh. he knows how to perform in front of a, a camera, in front right. of a crowd, and right. to keep, a, keep a hype going and everything else. And very, very fit, good looking guy. And it's so much fun to talk to. Just uh, a terrific, uh, uh, terrific people uh, from top to bottom. And the acting was great, and we had such a good camaraderie. It was such a unique experience. Like, none of us really wanted it to end, even though physically we probably couldn't have kept going at that pace. And so, thankfully, uh, for the very last day of filming on that Saturday, we went to uh, near Biloxi, uh, and we drove Mm -hmm. over from Baton Rouge to Biloxi and got four hours of sleep the night before and just cruised over there to a, a friend's yacht who let us just gave us the keys he's like i trust you guys and just dropped the oh, keys wow. to the yacht in our hands and so we had full full mm-hmm. reign to the yacht for the entire night and that was you know uh, the end of the shoot but it was the beginning of the movie so that's when we're going up to and i had my australian hat that i bought in australia ah. my souvenir because for my character i'm the one asking for money right and so I, I was like, well, what would I have? You know, and so I had my hat on from Australia as a little bit of a nod to my Aussie friends uh, because I want to show them the film uh, when it comes out. But I also bought a bottle of wine just at like a convenience store when I was on my way there because I would come with a gift. You know, if I'm coming to a, this billionaire's uh, yacht asking for money, I'm going to come bearing gifts. But I also wanted the character that I was playing to come like hat in hand. So, you know, the movie Hunt for Red October – uh, at the very end, when the Russian ambassador is like, "Sorry, we lost another submarine. We, we, yeah, we've right, lost yeah, another yeah. submarine." Uh, he literally takes off his hat and has his hat in his hands, and so because the director wanted him to have hat in hand, which is begging for something, and that's what I did. And so I got to the billionaire and oh. I took off my hat, and the whole scene where I'm having the conversation with the billionaire, my hat in and my is just in both hands, and I'd given him the wine, and that's all I've got to offer. And then you know, it's just a little subtext kind of thing, but. Uh, we got to, the the beauty of it is the yacht is supposed to be like you know we're having drinks we're having a good time we just got all this money and so we'd had this week to bond and and we're all just living the best life we're we're at this point we're delirious because we're so tired yeah but also we've become best friends over this past week and we're crying laughing over the worst jokes and you know stuff that like how did I ever think that was funny oh yeah it's because I was sleep deprived for a week yeah. and, and it was four in the morning and again. you're with a bunch of friends and I was with a bunch of great people and when you're acting you have to be very raw and vulnerable because you're doing a lot of stuff that isolated it, it can make you look very very silly <laughs> you know like, right yeah. you, you're doing things that are not in the norm and, and you have to act like a mermaid is eating your face you know you have to act like you're throwing up your teeth you know yeah. that's not a sexy thing to do is to throw up your own fake yeah. teeth and to have blood and pouring out of your mouth and it makes you sound look silly when you're doing yeah, it too. you like, look ridiculous because there's no sound and yet to yeah, it. There's, there's no, no cuts, sound there's no, no nothing, edit there's, there's no, no you don't uh, get to see the light, context the light Lights are much brighter much than they are brighter. on their thing. So. And, and, and like there's several moments when they have to do quick cut, uh, cutaway shots, right? So you do your master shot from a, from a wide angle. You do the whole scene. Like if you're all sitting around the table and then everybody does their whole scene, everybody does their lines, you get a whole five-minute scene with the master shot. So that's just a big wide shot of everybody. But then no movie is just a five-minute scene of a master of everybody. It's quick cuts you know, of your faces. And as a big important line comes up, they cut to that person's face, and then they cut to that person's face. Well, after you shoot the master, then the camera has to go around the table one at a time, and we all have to be quiet and you know, be, be in the shot and react with the actor as it's their line. But really, the, the, the script supervisor is just off camera, and he's feeding the line cue to each actor. It's like, here's your cue. And then, you know, not in character. So here's your cue. This is coming from Dr. Martin over there. You know, and this is what he's saying. Now say your line. And the camera's like right here in your face, four inches away. And you have to go through all your lines again. And uh, everybody's basically just sitting there staring at you, waiting for you to get your lines right. Right. And it's really hard to do sometimes. And, and you can get There's caught There's a lot up. of pressure, yeah. Yeah, and it's also four or five in the morning. Your brain turns into concrete yeah. sometimes. And so you need a lot of help. So we were all very, uh, it's called being generous when you're working with another actor. And you're not on camera, but you're there and you're giving him eye contact. You're reacting with your face or you're saying things as if you were right mm-hmm. there and giving your line. Because a lot of like famous actors, they won't 
stick around for their not close. If they're filming close ups for not them, then they'll go to their trailer. And like, you can just film it with the second AD or whoever is there. And then they have to pretend like the main actor is there to do those lines with. But the actors who stay, they are the ones who understand the value of eye contact and being in right. the moment. They want it to be good. And it's called being generous. But we were all so very generous with each other. And no one made fun of anybody else. And like it was very embarrassing. But after you've been doing that for a week and you learn to trust each other and you learn this person is going to be generous with me, I can be silly and not be worried about anyone laughing at me. And if they are laughing at me, we're all going to laugh because yeah. it's going to be such a good time. And uh, so by the end of the night, the yacht is you know falling apart. We've got a massive storm coming. We're in the bottom of this yacht. And I have, in real life, a little bit of claustrophobia. And so I go down to the bottom of this yacht. And it's, okay, Benjamin, you're going to be in the back over here in this corner. And I'm like, oh, my God. There's no exit for me whatsoever. There's no lights down here. No nothing. And I started to panic a little bit. So I was like, can we just can we just do this like for 30 seconds instead of 60 seconds? Like, can you use, like, how about 45? I was like, okay, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. And so everybody was helping me out because I was having a little bit of claustrophobia, but I was able to hide in a room in the back. And if I stepped back into that room far enough, I was able to trick my brain into thinking that I had another way out. There and so go. I was fine. So, but we got a couple of really good shots uh, at the end because we had a camera across the hall and a camera down the hall. And so I would start a lot of my lines to this camera right across from me. And then I would finish it looking down the hall. Down the hall. And then I would just step back into the room. <laughs> and so I didn't have to think about being stuck. Wow. It was it was so terrific. And that's just one tiny, tiny example of how good the shot was or how good the, the, the shooting of the whole thing was. And I, I'm honestly so very excited to see it. it. I know the movie knows what it is. But we, like I said, we had we had some new additions to the cast and crew, yeah. people who brought stellar levels of talent and ability. The camera crew continued to blow us away. They would, they would have a shot. There would occasionally be a scene where an actor or two would really hit it in the moment, and the whole crew and everybody would just clap spontaneously because we're like, oh, oh man, that felt great. But then there were also moments when the camera crew would catch a shot just right, and the focus would pull just perfectly to the next line or the next person or the, the monster hiding in the corner in the background, and the focus would go right to that hand coming around the corner or something. And then we would all see the playback and just like, oh, yes! Like, everybody was celebrated, and, and everybody had uh, a, a cheering section. Everyone motivating each everyone other. Everyone motivated each other. It was very... Uh, uh, fed on itself sort of vibe, and and it couldn't it couldn't have been a better experience to be honest. Good. And so we've only got a few final scenes to do, uh, big action scenes that we right. didn't have enough time to film. And the USS Kid, the crew there loved and enjoyed our company so much that they're letting us come back for free awesome. to finish the movie because awesome. they want us to finish the movie because it, it means yeah. as much to them because it's exposure for the museum. And yeah, you know, no, and, it is. Yeah, people will go I, see. It. I couldn't recommend it more highly uh, to go see the the, the ship. Uh, I got to have my own private tour of the Greyhound, of where Tom Hanks filmed Greyhound. I got to have my private tour of the captain's quarters. I got to see all that. I got to sit in the same chair where Tom Hanks filmed Greyhound in the captain's mess. That's awesome. And uh, hear all the stories about what that shoot was like. So I've got a picture of me sitting in the chair uh, where he was being served uh, breakfast or trying to serve him breakfast. Yeah. And I've got a picture of me in the in the bed where he sleeps at the end and and uh all, all these great nice. like not just greyhound like because that was a that was a a, a history about a, a different captain in a different era on a different ship basically but i mean i also got the inside scoop on the actual uss kid history and the real history yeah. of these real soldiers who went through this real stuff and and what happened to that ship and and all the things that had been through and it, oh my god just absolutely mind-blowing place and I can't wait to go back and, and film awesome. the rest of it and see everybody there again. Yeah. And I'm, I'm telling you, it was one of the best experiences. And and we're not done yet. So yeah. we're going to get to film the finale probably on Lake Pontchartrain with my friend Sam at, near the beach. You know, Right on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. And uh, we're going to uh, have him driving the boat. So I'm going to have a couple of my friends in it. My niece, Tyler, uh, might be in it as well because she won a, right a, a raffle ticket for the Bogman. For the, so oh. one, of the, one of the awards was a, a, a non-speaking role in the next movie. Yeah, So she got to do that. So we're going to have her in the movie. Awesome. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it couldn't have been a better big awesome. time. Real, real quick uh, before we go, uh, when is the expected release date of this? We are hoping to film the final scenes of the movie in March, so sooner than expected. My guess is that they will edit it and have it cut together 
probably before the summer, and then they will give it to the distributor, which it's up, and it's to, up to them, them when they want to release and it. And last it. time, though, the Bogman was released right around Halloween because of its nature. And so I'm guessing that they're targeting uh-huh. another Halloween October release date. That would be smart. Date, yes. It's, it is about the release date. That's the big It's all about the thing. release date. So, uh, you know, Hulu has a big thing where they have Halloween. So they yeah. come out with a lot of movies in, for Halloween and yeah. stuff. That's something yeah. we're eyeballing and hoping to be a part of. Okay. Uh, so I'm yeah, awesome. hoping for a spooky Halloween release with the uh, Sea of Madness and the Evil Mermaids and the. Uh, yeah. I'm ready. It's, I'm ready for it. Folks, if you're ready for it, let us know in the comments. And yes, um, yeah, thanks for talking about it. Look. Anytime you want, my friend. Even next Saturday. Morning! Samo O'Flange.